There'd be about ten of us in them days. There was always big rounds, weren't they? Yeah, always. we used to. With the bar which was over that side yeah. of the pub, which is now just part of the lounge. Uh, I mean, we were the best part of it, team. We weren't quite there, but we no. were nearly there. Within a year or two, anyway. <laughs> but it was, it was a local pub, so was the Griffin at the bottom. There was nothing else, really. But we couldn't go in the Griffin much, because the no. landlord knew us too well and knew how old we were. <laughs> <laughs> Learned to play dominoes in here. Tarts, it was. Yeah, it was darts busy, and right? dominoes. The old codgers used to take a fortune off us and bloody yeah. dominoes, so you, you learn the hard way. So how did you get started in rugby? From school, really. Both From school, school down yeah. the road, here. Yeah. Started yeah. at Farworth playing at the junior school, because all the junior schools in those days used to play each other in the every, every night before you'd sing, we played on the cricket field. And there'd be at least a dozen lads every night played proper rugby, not taken pass, proper rugby, knocking hell out of each other. And it, it was, you had the cricket field, but you had some waste land at the side, yeah, you? yeah. And it was full of bricks and everything, but it, we were tough then. You, you did play. Just talking to earlier, John, about the uh, about the bombs and things. Uh, where I lived in Windermere Street, a bit further down now were bungalows. But when I grew up, that was called the Brickfield, because a bomb had landed there in the war, and everybody knew it as the yeah. Brickfield, that was what it was called. There was a few bombs, there was one in Windermere Street, didn't it? Yeah. Killed a few. Yeah. yeah. What about the story of the birds? All the, yeah. When we were at Farmer School, they did a centenary, but it must have been a couple of hundred years old. I think. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it, it was a very old one. It was about 500 years of yeah, something like that. It was that old. It was a pageant, yeah. and uh, I always remember it because uh, Peter Bold, who was the the guy after whom Bold Village is named, who was also in Bold Bold Chapel being part of this church, along with Curdley Chapel and Cronton Chapel. They were all part of Farnworth Church, and. Uh, in this pageant I played Peter Bull doing somersaults and all yeah. sorts of strange things as a young lad of ten or whatever. Yeah, this pageant we had, uh, we, we had all the, it was like a harvest festival and all that, the village come in and all that, but there was bird baiting and they picked the biggest lad in the class which was Colin Yates because <laughs> he was a big fat lad and he was the bird. <laughs> That lad. I don't know. I don't know what part I played. John remembers what part he played. Uh, yeah, Peter Bold. <laughs> <laughs> I, I supposedly slew the Griffin, which was oh, the right, local. Yeah, the yeah, of course, the Griffin was a yeah. was it half lion, half eagle, or something like that, something similar. And that was how he became the hero of the village at the time. And the Griffin pubs there, everything. Yeah, it all, it all hangs together in bits and pieces. And he was on about rugby. John played for uh, the grammar school. Yeah. I played for Fairfield. And every everybody then played rugby. Everybody. And then we all went to the wids because it was, all the teachers used to teach you the rugby. Uh, you and Ray French. Was Ray French was Ray one French obviously was the at the that comes to Fairfield, and he used to send them to the wid, the, the wids. Mike Ryan used to send him from Fish and Muller. And um, well, it was it, it was the old boys' school for Wade anyway, from so Wade it was a nice. natural progression. We used to actually used to play. That Scotch fellow was what was his name? Liam Month. Liam Month. He used to send. Him yeah, but we had, we used to have an annual game, uh, the school against the club, which was uh, yeah. far, uh, Wade Eaton against the the the. the uh, the, a, a select team, I think, of all boys from the Wids. Uh, but there's a few memorable names in there. There was a, a couple of young lads called Eric Hughes and Steve Kendon who uh, made a bit of a mark in one of those games. I think Steve Kendon, who was, became, uh, well, it wasn't an international football, but he played for England A team or reserve team. Uh, he was a footballer. Eric was obviously an outstanding yeah. rugby player with goodness and yeah, St. Helens. Uh, he went on to come second in the Superstars, narrowly beaten on the TV Superstars into second place. Two local lads who made, well, Steakin was actually from Padgate, but uh, he went to Wayne Dean Grammar School. Uh, 
they were two of the most amazing athletes I've ever seen in my life, both of them. Was, um, but you got Farmer Street down here, it used to have like a little avenue off, which was called Russell Street. And as I say, we all played rugby every night. Uh, so we knew how to tackle and play rugby. And I could, I was in the Wids team once with uh, about six from Farmouth, which was the Rudges, a couple of the Rudges. Uh, Benny and Alan. The, the, the Mosses, Dave Moss and Andy Moss. Yeah. John, obviously. But we all played. And when we went, when we went to Furfield, George Street told me this tale last week. He went to see Ray French, who took over um, Furfield. And bear in mind, we always played rugby league. The first year Ray took over, we played 33 games and won 31 I, against all the top grammar schools, St Edwards and all that. The only ones that didn't play us was the way Deacon. I think it was a bit frightened, honestly, I think it was a bit frightened. But it beat St Teddy's. And this day we had to go and play Cowley. It's true this. And Ray French must have been playing an international or oh, he was with witness, but he couldn't go. But he turned up after the game, and we're all in, in them days. He got a, a pie and a orange juice after the game, only lads. And he came up to me and he said, How do we go on, Robbo? I said, uh, We won, sir. He said, You what? I said, We won. Anyhow, we did. And we beat Cowley Grammar School, we were massive. And the headmaster came over to Ray French and said, uh, I want a word with you. That hook is an idiot. No, yeah, <laughs> probably was, yeah. He said, uh, there's no way a secondary modern school is going to beat Cowley ever again. I want you back here. And Ray left, and you can ask him, if you see him, his wages doubled. He went back to Cowley Grammar School, and the, that's where he ended up. I mean, it wasn't true, just yeah. Fairfield because were, at the same time. It was a good team, obviously. But at the same time, with Mike Ryan at Fishermore, oh, yeah. they played it was rugby a union. Uh, Bankfield, because yeah. the other teams yeah. were playing rugby union. Yeah, because all they ever used to do was play each other a couple yeah. of times a year. Yeah. And Robbins Lane from St. Helens, because they were the, probably the nearest opponents. That and was they, it. they were the only games that the, yeah. that the rugby league lads had. So that's why, when referee, it's a shame that they, they don't think a bit more about it now, but of course, it was a standard thing in, in our day. You played games on a Wednesday afternoon or whatever, but all the schools used to turn out Saturday morning, and you used to have the PE teacher and all the other teachers, women, particularly at Wayne Eaton, used to have a rota where they always had to attend home and away. We went all over the northwest of England and still we. I finally played for a field twice, I think. I think I was second team beaten once. But that's the <laughs> It was, uh, no, there, there were days when I've seen old things from the weekly news from 30, 40 years ago. And there were seven rugby teams from Windows Rugby Union, six, uh, sorry, five from ICI, as it was, three from Fords, and three from what became Birchfield playing every Saturday and then there must have been at least a dozen amateur rugby league teams playing and that was every Saturday. Now you've got three or four rugby league teams in the town and you've got the Wids fielding three or four teams. It's changing times, it's sad but it's a fact. It's sad, yeah. And there's always reserves, there's always plenty yeah. of bodies. Everybody I mean, when you finished uh, school in them days before you see, you played rugby or cricket in the summer against the wall. My dad used to make cricket bats. You know, out, out to the wood, you never bought them because you couldn't afford them. <laughs> well, what, what about the Wids as a social venue? Oh, well, that was right. really uh, well, we, a perfect time uh, for yeah. us because we were uh, in the late, mid late 60s, that was our era oh. of young lads. Oh. Yeah. Young books, as we would like to have thought at the time. Anybody, it was anybody went to the Wits. Uh, you like to Frank Myers, all then. It, uh, it, was, it was the the place yeah. to go on a Saturday evening in Midness, yeah. and it used to be slewing every week. It was full, uh, and it, Friday night they used to we used to have beat nights. What beat a great night. name they were! Wednesday we had disco on a Wednesday, beat night Friday, and then Saturday night was a kind of for for all age groups. But the other two nights used to be just filled. 
uh, for a disco and for uh, usually a live group and some really good bands on there, kind of think, from Liverpool, yeah. the Almost Blues and people like that. And the place was full, it was bouncing. It's Sunday, Sunday you'd be queuing up to apologise for what you did Saturday night, <laughs> especially Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> he did. True. But, uh, but, uh, Sunday, we af Sunday afternoons was a session. Yeah, it was. Uh, well, the other thing was between we, twelve and two in them days, and you got down as much down your neck as you could. Yeah, and the other thing was uh, the selection. They used to meet to select the teams oh, on the Sunday lunchtime for the yeah. next Saturday. So you always used to go up, yeah. and then we if did, you found you out you were in the seconds instead of the first, yeah. you'd go berate whoever did the selecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And people would be ringing me up saying, uh, did you have a look where, where, where I am next week? Because the wife's on a hand do and I want to be away. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a golden era. Oh, late, late, late 60s was yeah. a golden era for rugby. I mean, as well as all that, we used to go and watch Witness everywhere. Yeah. When we, away, yeah. yeah. Probably a, a bit later than that when we watched them away much because we never had any cars at the first. We couldn't go. We got as far as St Helens and Wigan, but uh, we watched rugby league. We played rugby union. We, we enjoyed both. It's it, it's just a great thing that the <laughs> hatchets have been buried, and strangely enough, there's less people playing the games already. Or even so, either you play Colts rugby. Yes, oh, I, 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 yeah, I'm cold, I loved it. I, yeah, I left but, way deep. But in fact, when I was 15, I played Colts because I used to play for, for, for 16. Fairfield in the morning and played Colts in the afternoon with the likes of Billy Spencer, John yeah, Cushman, yeah, and yeah. all them. I was really young. But I played after that as well yeah. on my own age group then. Well, mine was a bit it amusing was because I left way deep and my PE teacher was Garth Tollett, who was a captain at the Wits. And on the last day, he come up to me on the Friday and said, "You're with me in the second team on Saturday." <laughs> I said, "Well, he said I picked you for the second team. You're playing on Saturday. No, 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 no you're no longer at school uh, because we 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 used to play in the morning at the school and then the winds in the afternoon. But the school stopped that. Said it wasn't good for us. So of course, like four, three or four of us went off and played amateur rugby league in the afternoon for a few seasons because." Two games a day seem nothing now. You only have to watch 20 minutes of an international like yesterday and I feel bruised and battered yeah. just watching it now. Yeah. But it, it meant nothing and uh, we had some great times. Colts, our Colts for years and years, every one of them, everyone played for the first team at the Wits. And any sevens competitions we won up and down the country. Yeah. They, they, they were good years, Yeah. really good years. Yeah. And it all stems from junior school, I say. All stems because we played every night. You knew how to pass a ball. You were never coached because you knew how to pass a ball and tackle. It was in your, it was in your blood. Yeah, it was. Um, it was, uh, it was. I mean, Mike Ryan used to take us for years training. He used to train you, knock hell out of you. He you were fit, but you never coached. He didn't need to. He, he, he wasn't a rugby coach as such. No, he wasn't. He, but he was the best fitness well, coach I ever had in any, in any game. He, he was unbelievable. He, would, yeah. Yeah. he was a sadist. <laughs> That's all there is to it. He was a sadist, you're right. <laughs> sadist, he used to yeah. love seeing yeah. people suffer. <laughs> I mean, in them days, don't forget, we used to get, we used to go to train at the weight Deacon a lot, get back to the weights. You always have three or four pints. Not like now, they don't come in now. Nobody comes in. But all the team used to come in. You'd have three or four pints, a good laugh. And sometimes you'd end up in the Chinese going up. <laughs> this was, it was different. This was the kind of training you needed. Yeah, but it, it, it was more a social game as well then. But as I said that, we were fit. We really were fit. Yeah. So you, you could do all that. But my... Yeah. Like the, after the the introduction with Garth, prior to that when I said we'd been playing rugby union uh, in at school in the morning and then in the afternoon, that all started when I played at Ormskirk Grammar for way beaten on a Saturday morning. And the coach brought us back and as we were getting off at the Black Horse, Ray Johnson, who's a couple of years old and was a friend I still have now, 
he said, I'm getting straight on that bus, they went to take me to play for the Wids at Ormskirk for the fourth team or something. And when he was getting on the bus, he said, we're a couple short. Can you come? I said, well, we'll have to go and tell my mum and dad. I was, I was only 15. We'll have to go and tell my mum and dad and let them know. And myself and I, like called Alan Dalton from Clockface. Yeah, I went home, told my mum and dad I was going out to play again. Rang Alan's parents to tell him he was going to play in the after, he wouldn't be home. And we got back on the coach and I said, where are we playing? And they said, Ormskirk. We played on the same pitch in the afternoon that I played on in the morning. <laughs> and after that, we used to turn up for uh, Jed Higgins Extras on a Saturday. All sorts of third B teams and everything, but Morris Hunt took over the Extras. Now, Morris, everyone knows, a legend in the woods. But he ran the seventh team. And if you think about it, when you've got seven teams, you've got... 15 really bad players for each position who make up the seventh team. And I always remember the first game he picked me, uh, I was asked, would you play in the extras? I said, of course I will. That was Saturday afternoon, you know, I'm doing nothing else. And we were at Liverpool University against Liverpool University third team at Camp Helmet, Mosley Hill or whatever it is. Just three months cross anyway. And I was playing standoff. And it's, we had a 25 dropout. And as I reached the 25, it was 25 in them days, not 22. As I reached it, I looked and everyone on the field was on one side, except me and Morris who were on the other side. So I tapped it over the line and passed it to him, it was 75 yards out. At which point he kicked it straight into touch and said, you're in the third B next week, I've dropped you. <laughs> <laughs> Then you know everybody, uh, we were committed then, uh, not like now, they, any excuse, they don't turn up. Well, I got married on the Saturday. Yeah, played in the Lancashire Cup. I'd have played in the Lancashire Cup on the Sunday, and <laughs> Peter Banner was the captain, John's brother. And Peter said, could you get up at half ten just to do a little training session before? <laughs> <laughs> before, I said, he's joking, are you? <laughs> Been up all night. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I got the headlines in the Liverpool pink, anyhow. First players on his honeymoon. We didn't have honeymoons then, nobody had any money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was great. Good days, good days. You played when you were injured then because you were frightened of getting dropped. Because <laughs> the second team was as good as the first in them days. It, it was, really was. There was nothing much between it. In fact, when you. When, when you did the scrummaging on a Thursday between the first and second team pack. The second team always won. It did. It was nothing because we had bodies, didn't we? Yeah, but it was. You know, there were, there were no leagues. No, it's no leagues. There were no leagues, and there was a kind of rough version of a merit table, I think you'd call it. But I mean, we used to we used to try and get fixtures with with better teams, obviously. And Waterloo, Liverpool, Fylde, always used to avoid us like the plague. It's been a frightening we beat them. And we have beaten all of those clubs. As, as, at the words when I was there, we beat all of those clubs that won it. Of course, it was always a, oh, it was just a pre season warm up, or it, it was just a friendly at the end of the year, midweek. But the reason was that we were better than them at the time. I mean, when we won the Lancashire Cup under, under my brother, uh, we beat Oral, who were so strong and fancy to win. Within a few years, they were in like Premiership. What was the original Premiership rugby rugby union set up? But they didn't, nobody wanted to play lads from Wigan. Nobody wanted yeah. to play against them. I mean, one of the clubs who did give us a fixture was St Helens, and uh, we battled for that for years. And we, I think we beat them the first twice we played, and it became a regular fixture then. We used to always like going to Moss Lane, there's always plenty of beds to pinch in that field opposite. <laughs> there was always the tours as well, which you, they're not the tours like you see now, the, 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 the tours in them days were fantastic. I know they were boozy, but they were against good teams, Welsh teams especially. 
And uh, I went on a few Colts too as, as a representative with Ray and them. I was with you, I was with you at the Leeds. Uh, and that is the finest time I've ever had in my life. <laughs> they were fantastic. In the pub called the Robin Hood in Leeds. Oh, yeah. I won't even tell you where no, they went no, to. Be, I mean, the box that does stay uh, on two of that. Yeah, but, I mean, goes on they were fantastic. And, and by the way, it doesn't matter. Nothing about infidelity, it was just general behaviour. Yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, no vandalism, everything like that. It was just good-hearted fun. <laughs>